We've had months of driver updates, new games, and price drops, at least on the 7900 XTX. So how does the best GPU from AMD this generation stack up against the best GPU from Nvidia? First of all, these don't cost the same. So we should expect the 4090 to win. The question is by how much and how much compared to the price difference. The closer price competitor to the 7900 XTX is the 4080, and I've done a similar head-to-head -head comparison of what I'm showing you now for that already, but but this time we're looking at the 7900 XDX. Now in the current market, if I look at PC part picker and sort prices low to high, for some reason an RTX 2060 shows up, but past that point we see some actual 7900 XDX. Uh, looks like you can get the Power Color Hellhound right now for $930. I will mention that just recently uh, I posted some uh, coupon codes on Amazon that was bringing some models of the 7900 XDX down to below $900. However, those coupon codes seem to have expired at least for now. Uh, but I did want to point out that we have seen these come down below $900. Um, however, again, right now, it looks like you get the Power Color Hellhound for 930 is the lowest model. Uh, some other good uh, cooler models here, like the, the Merc for 950, um, some other 950 models. Um, uh, even the Red Devil, which is one of the top-end coolers at 980 below the original MSRP of 1000. And speaking of the Power Color Red Devil, now let me show you something really cool from today's sponsor, Power Color, with their Red Devil GPUs, with their swappable devil skin backplates. It's so cool not to have to be locked into just one design. You can choose the one that fits best for you, easily swappable with magnets. We've got the uh, intrusive devil skin, which is the kind of the simpler, sleeker looking one. And we've got the mesh design called the generative devil skin. These are all really cool. They just attach on with magnets. Excellent choice for a high-end GPU. Check the link in the today's description. All right, so we've seen that the 7900 XTX is well below its original MSRP of $1,000, although still hanging out usually above $900. What about the RTX 4090? The RTX 4090 uh, had an MSRP of $1,600. I have seen it come down a bit at times. Looks like the cheapest model uh, I'm finding right now is $1,585. So it's still very close to that original MSRP. So that is a massive price difference. And um, so we need to keep that in mind as we're uh, doing the comparison here. Now also keep in mind the models that I'm using here. Um, I had to buy an RTX 4090 when they launched. This was before I was getting uh, review samples. So mine is the uh, Gigabyte Gaming OC, which was just the only one I could buy at launch uh, b before they sold out. I had to click very quickly because unlike a lot of the uh, lower end 40 series cards, the 4090s were selling out on launch day. Um, and then the 7900 XDX, I did get a review sample from AMD, which means it is the reference model. So if you did buy one of those higher end cooler models, like maybe you have the Red Devil from Power Color, you might notice that you will probably get boosts a bit higher than me. You could get a few percent higher results. Also, I'm running both cards at their out of the box settings. Uh, and the 7900 XDX, again, especially if you have one of the higher end cooler models, could be overclocked and close some of this gap, although it still isn't going to catch the 4090. So just do keep in mind uh, that I do have a cooler model advantage here on my 4090. And if you want to say I'm biased, I'm to say, I'll use, hey, if you want to send me a higher end uh, 7900 XDX to test, uh, I'll gladly test it next time I do the comparison. <laughs> anyway, let's jump into the uh, head to heads and I'll give you some final thoughts at the end. So many new games will be coming out in Unreal Engine 5. We'll begin our testing here with the first third-party game available in Unreal Engine 5, which is Layers of Fear. We're looking at 4K High. High is the highest preset in the game. This game features the Lumen lighting system, but not some other features like Nanite. This is probably not as demanding as some games will be, but the 4090 is 43% faster here on average but the 7900 XTX is going over 60 frames per second, and you can hardware accelerate Lumen with hardware ray tracing, and that's what we're looking at next, and the 4090's lead grows to 49% on the averages, uh, but the 7900 XTX is still averaging over 60 FPS at 4K resolution, it's just that the 4090 is closing in on almost 100 FPS at the same settings. If we drop the settings down to 1440p, the lead for the 4090 does decrease to 31% on average and 30% in the 1% lows, 
Both GPUs here are delivering an excellent experience. Uh, we're over, uh, you know, over 130, almost 140 average on the 7900 XTX and closing in on 180 average on the 4090. What if we turn on ray tracing? Well, again, this is a fairly light ray tracing workload. It does not punish the AMD GPU that badly, but again, it does take a bigger hit compared to the 4090. Uh, so now the 4090 is winning by 36% on average and 40% in the 1% lows. But once again, both GPUs delivering a very good experience with the 7900 XDX still around 120 frames per second, even with the ray tracing enabled. Now, I don't think many people will be buying these GPUs at 1080p, but you never know. And for completion of testing, thought I'd just go ahead and do it. At 1080p, we see the 4090 drop to a 21% lead on average and 19% in the 1% lows. It's possible we're seeing a little more CPU limitation play into things uh, as you decrease the resolution and the frame rates get really high. Uh, is if you turn on the hardware accelerated ray tracing, we do see the 4090's lead climb to 27% on average, and only 14% in the 1% lows. Again, could be indicating a bit of a CPU bound nature. The 4090's GPU usage percentage uh, does drop into the upper 90s, showing that it's still mostly utilized, but, but um, could have been a bit CPU bound there. Now. Let's look at one of the latest Unreal Engine 4 games, pushing that engine about as far as it can go with Star Wars Jedi Survivor at 4K epic settings. This is without ray tracing on. We do see the 7900 XTX right around to 60 frames per second, but the 4090 is up closer to 80 frames per second, giving it a 38% lead on the averages. Also, I'm noticing in this section of this game at least, uh, a bit of an unstable frame time graph and affecting the 1% lows on the 7900XDX, uh, giving the 4090 a 69% lead in the 1% lows. It's definitely offering a smoother experience there. Turning on ray tracing in this game does uh, punish both GPUs, but not terribly. The 7900XDX is still capable of a native resolution of around 50 FPS at 4K without any upscaling. The game does have FSR2 upscaling. Um, but the 4090 doesn't take as big of a hit. It's still up in the mid 70s. It has a 55% lead on average and a 79% lead in the 1% lows. Again, the frame time graph is uh, the best indication of how smooth the playing experience would be, and it is uh, definitely smoother on the 4090. So then what if we drop down to 1440p, which is still, I think, a more popular resolution, even for very powerful GPUs, and you can see why. It's much easier to have the settings on Epic and still be getting a very high refresh rate experience. Here we see the 7900XTX well over 100 FPS, uh, the RTX 4090 up uh, to around even 150 FPS. It's a 33% lead on averages, although the 1% lows, again, we're getting a much smoother frame time graph uh, on the 4090, and in this case, we have an 83% lead on the 1% lows uh, in, this, uh, in this scene. By the way, a lot of other scenes in this game can get very CPU limited, <laughs> especially if you're in the towns and things like that, but a lot of these... Uh, outside of town areas, uh, not too much of a CPU limit on my 7800X 3D. Uh, turning the ray tracing settings on further increases the 4090's lead. This time the averages are winning by 52%, and the 1% lows are almost double. Uh, we're looking at about, you know, 40s versus 80s on the 1% lows. And again, you see a little, a little bit more of a spiky frame time graph on the 7900XDX. Although um, still getting, uh, almost a 90 FPS average on the 79 XDX here, and the 4090 up over 130 FPS average. So uh, high frame rates to be had by all. Now, if we drop down to 1080p epic settings, we're definitely seeing some CPU bind uh, for sure on the 4090. If you look at its GPU usage percentage, it was frequently down around 90% or even lower down into the 80% range, uh, which indicates the GPU is waiting on the CPU. Uh, and also explains why the 4090 is now only 12% ahead on the averages, uh, but 55% ahead on the 1% lows, so it still does have um, that smoother uh, experience advantage here at these settings. Uh, the AMD GPU could be hitting some CPU limitation, but generally they hit those limits at a, uh, at a higher frame rate. The AMD drivers or something along those lines seem to be less heavy on the CPU, so they get CPU bound a little bit less. 
Uh, if we turn the uh, ray tracing settings on, 1080p Epic RT on, we now see the 4090 winning by 44% and 81% uh, in the 1% lows, so able to stretch its advantage a bit more here with the ray tracing enabled. Uh, back to more similar to what we were seeing at the higher resolution settings. And overall, the experience is still quite good on both. The 7900 XDX is around 120 FPS, um, which is way more than enough to play this game. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to another game. Uh, Plague Tale Requiem is uh, not an Unreal Engine game. This is a Sobo Studios own engine. It's one of the best looking games out there. At 4K Ultra, uh, we're seeing the 7900 XDX uh, over 60 FPS average here, but the 4090 with a 38% lead pushing 89. Has a much bigger lead than the 1% lows again at 80%. A bit of a spiky looking frame time graph on the 7900 XDX. Uh, which is not good to see. However, when I drop down to 1440p resolution, uh, the frame time graph seems uh, a lot smoother than it did at 4K for the uh, XTX and helps the 1% lows be more in line with the overall results with a 32% lead for the 4090 and 39% in the 1% lows. Uh, and both GPUs at 1440p here are crushing it with a nice high refresh rate experience. The 7900 XDX around 120 FPS average and the 4090 around 158. Uh, this game would feature DLSS3 frame generation uh, if you were on the 4090. Um, I did use it when I was playing at 4K in this game, and I thought this game, um, it actually did have a very good image quality and was pretty, pretty useful, especially in the more CPU bound areas. Uh, at 1080p ultra settings here, we're getting a 31% lead for the 4090 on average and in the 1% lows, and this time the frame time graph is looking extremely smooth for both GPUs. Um, uh, and, you know, the overall frame rates are quite high, over 160 average on the 7900 XDX and 200 or more on the 4090. Uh, let's move on to some PlayStation 5 exclusive games. We're looking at The Last of Us Part 1. Uh, this is uh, tested on patch 1.1, which has been, you know, it's a culmination of a lot of patching to make the game run a lot smoother than it did at launch. Here we're seeing the 7900 XDX able to hold a 60 FPS native ultra settings. Uh, just about, and the 4090 is up around 87 average, giving it a 47% lead and a 37% lead in the 1% lows. Dropping down to 1440p resolution, the 7900 XTX um, is actually catching in the 1% lows. So here we might be seeing some CPU limitations possibly affecting the 1% lows. Um, through certain areas here as, as part of the ex explanation because uh, the 49 is winning by 5% in the 1% lows, but 45% in the averages. The 7900 XDX is giving a great, uh, you know, high refresh rate, especially for a single player game around 95 FPS, but the 4090 is closing in on 140 FPS. And at 1080p ultra settings, we see, uh, interestingly, the 7900 XDX actually pull ahead in the 1% lows. Again, um, the 4090, you can definitely see it not able to fully utilize. You can see its GPU percentage down in the 80s here. Um, so this is definitely, uh, especially in the 1% lows, affected by the 4090 hitting the CPU limit and the 7900 XDX hitting it at a higher point, which is normal uh, for AMD using less driver overhead. So 10% lead in the averages on the 1% lows for the 7900 XDX, but 29% lead in the averages. Um, and again, it was 1% lows lead for the uh, 7900 XDX. Another uh, PlayStation 5 exclusive game that's been ported to PC is Forspoken. We're looking at its ultra high preset, uh, which does include ray tracing. Now with even uh, with this these settings, it is a 42% lead for the RTX 4090 at 4K. The 7900 XDX though, even with the ray tracing enabled here, is averaging close to 60 FPS, but the 4090 is over 80 FPS average. Uh, and I'm not doing the 1% lows through this benchmark because it goes through these load screens to show off this. This is the one game that has direct storage on PC. Uh, so it shows off those load screens, but those also cause stutters on the frame time graph as it loads. So that messes up our 1% lows during the benchmark run. Anyway, at 1440p ultra high, which again includes ray tracing, the 4090 has a 38% lead, but the 7900 XDX is offering great experience here. It's um, up around 100 FPS average. The 4090 is uh, over 130 FPS average. 
Uh, so both both GPUs giving great experience, but definitely a 38% win for the uh, 4090, and dropping down to 1080p resolution, but still at the ultra high preset. Um, both GPUs pushing a yeah truly high refresh rate experience now. Uh, the 7900 XTX is uh, closing in on 130 FPS average, with the 4090 uh, over 160 FPS average, giving it a 29% lead overall. Uh, and again, when you start pushing into these really high refresh rate uh, numbers, it's possible that you can get a little bit of CPU limitation, uh, especially on the... Uh, NVIDIA GPUs um, bring down the results at the lower resolutions. Now, if we go to uh, one more PlayStation 5 exclusive, we can look at Returnal, which has also been ported to PC. I'm using the 4K Epic preset. This game does feature ray tracing, but I do not have it enabled here. It's not part of the Epic preset. And uh, the 4090 is only winning by 20% here at 4K Epic. Uh, the 7900 XDX is averaging over 90 FPS. The 4090 is over 111. But this is one of the best results we've seen for the 7900 XDX. And dropping down to 1440p, it gets even better for the 7900 XDX. Sure, this isn't a win, but it's only an 11% lead for the 4090. So when you look at the price difference on these GPUs, uh, if this was a more typical result, with the 4090 only, you know, 11% ahead and only 4% ahead in the 1% lows, uh, then it would look silly charging $1,600 for a 4090 um, versus the price of the 7900 XTX. But as, we, as we've seen, this is not a typical result, uh, but it is... Um, nice to see for AMD that it, it's not completely blown out in every title. Uh, at 1080p epic settings, the 4090's lead drops to 6% and 10% in the 1% lows. But, you know, at, at this point, it's basically a tie. They're both basically giving you a 200 frames per second experience uh, with the 4090 a few FPS above that and the 7900 XDX a few FPS below 200. Now, uh, another game that uh, does very, very well for the 7900 XTX relative to the much more expensive 4090 is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. We're looking at the 4K balance preset here, where the 4090 is only winning by 2% on average and 11% in the 1% lows. Uh, so the much less expensive GPU is giving you the same frame rate uh, for the most part here, uh, which is pretty interesting. This game in particular does seem to just like AMD hardware. And if we drop down to 1440p, we now see the 7900 XDX taking a lead in the averages by 7%, and uh, the 4090 still had by 3% in the 1% lows. In other words, this is basically a tie, but the 7900 XDX is pulling a little bit ahead. Um, both of them giving a very high refresh rate experience. And um, uh, by the way, some people always ask, why don't I test Warzone 2? This is the same graphics engine, um, so relatively the GPUs will perform the same relatively to each other in Warzone 2. It's just much easier to use the built-in benchmark to get accurate results, which comes in the, in the Modern Warfare 2 package. At 1080p balance, and for a competitive gamer, you might actually be buying incredibly expensive GPUs to play at uh, you know high refresh rate 1080p, so this isn't out of the question. The 7900 XDX is pulling ahead with an 11% lead on averages, although the 4090 uh, has a 7% lead in the 1% lows. Um, the 7900 XDX giving almost a 350 FPS average. Now uh, let's look at some other cross-gen games. Let's look at Resident Evil 4, which is on the RE engine at 4K Max preset, which does include ray tracing. The RTX 4090 is ahead by 38% on both the averages and the 1% lows, but even at max settings 4K with ray tracing enabled, the 7900 XDX is still giving you a 90 FPS experience. Uh, so it's not like you can't max the game out at 4K native resolution on the 7900 XDX. Uh, if we switch to the Prioritize Graphics preset, which does not include ray tracing and turns down a number of other settings as well, uh, both GPUs giving a high refresh rate experience, but the 4090 is uh, has a 40% lead and a 58% lead in the 1% lows. Um, but uh, the 7900 XDX is uh, over 110 FPS, so uh, still a very good experience with those settings. Now, what if we drop down to 1440p resolution? Well, at 1440p resolution, first let's go back to the maximum preset, which once again does include ray tracing. Uh, we only see the four, oh, well, not only, but we see the 4090 up by 38% on averages 
and uh, 22 percent in the one percent lows. And here, if you again look at the 4090s GPU usage as we ran through the town, at times it did drop below the 99 or 100 percent range, indicating the one percent lows especially could have been affected by the CPU usage. Um, a little bit, especially in those 1% low results. And I think that um, at 1440p prioritized graphics, we are absolutely seeing that. You can see the 4090 here reporting uh, usage only in the 80% range, uh, which explains why the 1% lows are only a 2% lead here, but the uh, averages are a 30% lead for those times where it is not um, uh, bound by the, the rest of the system here. The overall frame rates here are around 200 FPS on the 7900 XDX and 250 on the 4090. So they're both uh, very, very fast. Now dropping down to 1080p resolution um, at the maximum preset, which once again includes ray tracing, uh, we see the 4090 um, again getting pretty CPU bound. You can see its GPU usage percentage down in the 80% range. Uh, the 4090 is up by 25% on the averages and only 7% in the 1% lows. But again, it's just that we're hitting such uh, high frame rates here and ray tracing does increase the CPU load uh, and, and all of that, that I think we're hitting a, a CPU limit on a lot of this. And especially when we hit the uh, prioritized graphics preset at 1080p, we're now getting very high frame rates and the 4090 is uh, GPU usage is reporting down into the 70s now. Uh, and it's uh, only giving us a 12% lead on average FPS. And the 7900 XDX actually has a 3% lead now in the 1% lows, which is basically a tie. They're both over 250 FPS uh, on averages and over 200 in the 1% lows. Um, but yeah, we're definitely seeing some CPU limitation there at 1080p. Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K Ultra uh, sees the 4090 with um, only, uh, you know, I do say only, but you know, compared to our other results, this is a bit lower than what we saw in a lot of other games at 4K Max. Uh, the 4090 is up by 26% on the averages and 25% in the 1% lows. The 7900 XDX is averaging in the mid 60s and the 4090 is averaging over 80 frames per second. So it is a meaningful win. I just mean like compared to what we've seen in some other games, uh, we're not seeing as big of a lead in Cyberpunk at Ultra preset as we did in some others. Uh, at uh, 1440p Ultra, we see the 4090 only winning by 19%, so it drops even a bit further at 1440p. Uh, you can occasionally see a little bit of CPU limitation here like as we go through the city section, so that could be playing into it a bit. Uh, we see a 12% lead in the 1% lows, both of them giving a high refresh rate experience here uh, with over 130 FPS on the 7900 XDX and even higher on the 4090. But I really wanted to use Cyberpunk as a heavy ray tracing workload. So if you try to do 4K ray tracing ultra preset, even the 4090, while it's playable, it struggles to give you the frame rates you would want on a GPU like this. Getting around 40 frames per second at 4K Ultra on the 4090, and the 7900 XTX is uh, just shy of 20 FPS, uh, giving us over a, uh, basically double the performance in heavy ray tracing workloads on the 4090. Now at 4K resolution, ray tracing is gonna be difficult for any GPU, like I said, including the RTX 4090, so you might wanna use upscaling, and also some games, but not all, uh, but Cyberpunk does feature frame generation as well. So FSR2 quality for the 7900XDX does get it up into the 30s and even in the 40s. Uh, it's a little more playable. DLSS quality pushes the uh, 4090 up into the 70 FPS range. And our average comparison here is without frame generation. So it's uh, still a 95% lead, so almost double the performance of the 4090 um, uh, on the averages. But with frame generation, you can push it over 100 FPS. Although keep in mind, if you look at the very bottom of the screen, um, there is a bit of a hit to latency, although these numbers still feel pretty good. For me, I've, I've tested this out a lot just playing with it, and if I'm under 50 milliseconds of latency, that's feeling good. Uh, frame generation can have its own little image quality artifacts, especially with HUD elements and things, but at this high of a frame rate, it usually looks pretty good. And I've played around with the game at those settings, and I did like it. It felt, it felt quite good. Um, I did want to look at more aggressive upscaling at FSR2 performance setting, DLSS performance setting, and again, with and without uh, frame generation enabled. 
Uh, the performance setting, the uh, 7900 XDX still is shy of a 60 FPS experience, although it gets closer to it. But if you guys are on a large 4K screen uh, like I am, which you very well might not be right now, uh, you should be able to tell that DLSS at the performance setting does give a more detailed reconstruction than FSR2 does at the performance setting. You could look at channels like Hardware Unbox, which has done an uh, extremely detailed image quality comparison between DLSS and FSR2, but the image quality does look better here, uh, especially at the performance setting um, with DLSS. And without frame generation, it's an 89% lead for the 4090 here, um, uh, getting 100 frames per second. Uh, frame gen again pushes it even higher. But personally, I wouldn't go this aggressive on the 4090. I, I think the DLSS quality and then maybe plus frame generation was very, very usable. I don't think we need to more aggressively upscale and further decrease the image quality. Now, what about 1440p heavy ray tracing? Uh, so look, let's first look at the native resolution, no upscaling. The 7900 XDX is usable here, but probably not at the frame rates that most people spending this much money on a GPU would want to be getting. We're certainly over 30 FPS in demanding scenes and getting over 40 FPS as we get into easier scenes. Uh, but the uh, 4090 is usable as a over 60 FPS, we're actually up in the mid 70s, even pushing into the 80s in the easier scenes, and I think by the end of the benchmark run, native 1440p ultra ray tracing GPU. So um, if people ask if the 4090 is too powerful for 1440p, I think actually no if you wanna use ray tracing without upscaling. Now, interestingly, you can turn on frame generation without DLSS, and then you avoid the DLSS upscaling artifacts, although you can still get some of the um, HUD element artifacts, and that actually pushes it to a very smooth experience on a high refresh rate monitor, which is interesting, and I'm showing that on the right-hand side. Um, however, uh, upscaling at the quality setting can still look pretty good at 1440p, and if we enable that, the 7900 XDX is now gonna be giving you over 60 FPS, uh, with 1440p ultra ray tracing. So it is certainly usable. Image quality wise, uh, FSR2 quality looks okay at 1440p. I do think DLSS quality does look a bit better on the reconstructions here, especially on objects in motion. Um, and then uh, the DLSS quality is boosting the, the 4090 uh, well over 120 FPS, giving it an 87% lead um, overall on, um, without frame generation and a 50% lead in the 1% lows, uh, which could be getting a bit CPU limited here. Ray tracing does increase the CPU workload. Now you can again turn on frame generation uh, and push this uh, over to around 190 FPS almost. But again, that's the smoothness of the image, not the input responsiveness, but the base frame rate was so good, the responsiveness feels great at those settings. Um, now, if we go to path tracing, <laughs> Cyberpunk did get upgraded with a path tracing mode, which is incredibly demanding on every GPU. Uh, it's really not, uh, I mean, I don't think it's optimized at all for AMD for one thing, but uh, again, I just don't think that hardware is also trying to deliver this level of RT performance. So the 7900 XDX is really not usable even with the uh, quality upscaling uh, with path tracing at 1440p. This is the RT overdrive mode. Uh, with DLSS quality, so this does require some upscaling, the 4090 can give you over 70 FPS average, so a very usable experience at 1440p, even with the path tracing mode enabled. Um, and then again, you can put frame generation on past that to smooth out the image on a high refresh rate monitor. Again, not helping your input responsiveness, but uh, again, it's still under the 50 millisecond mark, which was kind of my personal line here. So I think it still feels and looks very good with frame gen enabled. And this is an interesting way to play the game on the 4090. So let's do some analysis with division. If we take the MSRPs of these graphics cards at 1599 divided by 999, we see that the at original launch MSRP prices, the RTX 4090 was 60% more expensive than the 7900 XTX. Uh, using the PC part picker lowest price available new as of today, as I showed you at the beginning of the video, uh, we saw the 4090 today would cost me 1585 if I bought the cheapest model and 930 on AMD if I bought the cheapest model. 
uh, which would be uh, uh, a 70% price premium for the RTX 4090. So in other words, at today's pricing, if I bought the lowest price available, the RTX 4090 would be 1.7 times the price of the, uh, RT, uh, of the uh, 7900 XTX. And if we then jump into the benchmarks, well, we did see that performance could be kind of all over the place. Um, we never saw the, uh, well, I shouldn't say never, but it's extremely rare to see the 4090 actually delivering 70% more uh, performance uh, than the 7900 XDX. Uh, even with ray tracing workloads enabled, uh, in lighter ray tracing workloads, we often see it maybe, you know, 50% faster. But as we scroll through these, uh, we see uh, sometimes, you know, over 50% faster in, in uh, Epic settings here. The only time we see anything approaching the, um, the kinds of performance differences that we see in the price differences is with very heavy ray tracing workloads enabled, uh, like we saw in Cyberpunk RT Ultra, things like that. And the vast majority of games that we've been seeing don't come out with uh, either, either they don't have ray tracing or they have lighter ray tracing workloads, where again, we didn't see as dramatic of an advantage for, um, uh, for the NVIDIA GPU. In other words, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, yes, the RTX 4090 is absolutely a more powerful graphics card. And especially if you're playing at 4K resolution, having that extra power can certainly come in handy if you're trying to max out the latest games. However, uh, it's not usually 70% faster or even 60% faster, uh, but that is the price difference attached to these cards. And once again, my performance numbers, I did have a lower end cooler on my 7900 XTX, versus a pretty decent cooler on my 4090. So, so those results could have been even a little bit more um, uh, value-wise in AMD's favor. So in other words, I do think the 7900 XTX offers better performance per dollar than the 4090 in the vast majority of games and situations. Uh, the 4090 in heavy ray tracing, and then once you factor in some features with, you know, uh, frame generation, which I think is an interesting and, and usable feature in a lot of ga single player games, um, it, it's a nice to have, so you can try to add in a little bit more of the value add. But in terms of just raw performance, uh, the 7900 XDX is very fast and offers better performance per dollar than the 4090. Uh, but again, it's really priced more as a RTX 4080 competitor. So really, what this comes down to is if you do have $1,600 to spend on a GPU, the 4090 is the best one, and you should probably just grab that. <laughs> um, uh, it's also interesting that while it does draw more power overall when they're both completely maxed out, uh, you can find situations uh, where it's hitting some CPU limits and things like that, where the 4090 is not working as hard as it could be. And for example, in uh, Last of Us Part 1 1440p Ultra, we can see places where it's down in the 200 and some watt range versus 350 watts and still delivering uh, a higher frame rate at that uh, number. So it's certainly much more energy efficient. Although when both GPUs are pulling near their maximums, uh, the 7900 XTX, uh, all, it seems to be more consistently right around 350 watts. Again, some of the uh, overclockable models will push over 400 watts if you want them to, and again, could close a bit of the performance gap, not all of it. Um, but the uh, 4090 will certainly go up to around 450 watts at times, and again, you could try to overclock it past that. But a lot of the times, the 4090 is actually hanging out in more like the 300 to 350 watt range, sometimes even less, <laughs> um, at, at, you know, so it is interesting to see how energy efficient uh, the 4090 really can be, which is, which is pretty cool. So anyway, in the end, I think these are both really good GPUs. We saw the kind of results they were getting. There were certain places where AMD did get some wins. It was certainly not wins on average, but uh, wins uh, did pop up like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. So if you are mostly, like I know there are definitely some competitive gamers that really only mostly just play one game. So if you're just somebody who plays Modern Warfare 2 all day or Warzone 2 all day, um, and that's the mo most of what you do with your gaming PC, uh, the 7900 XTX can be as fast or even faster than the RTX 4090 in that particular game. So I'll, I will definitely call out that standout result. And we did see some other games, like I think it was Returnal, 
where the lead for the um, for the 4090 was not as big as we saw in some other games. So I think a lot of people were hoping when the 7900 XTX launched that we would start to see more situations like this where, the, where it's a lot closer in performance to the 4090 than it is to the 4080, for example. Uh, but still with a lot of driver updates in the latest games, we're, not, we're still seeing these kinds of results as more of the uh, exception to the rule uh, rather than the rule itself. It would be cool if we eventually saw some more driver updates and things like that to help the 7900 XTX uh, out, but I would never count on that being a for sure thing. Uh, you should always buy things based on what they're like now rather than what they might be like in the future. And again, that's my thought on frame generation. Uh, since launch, a lot of people have been saying, yeah, but AMD has announced FSR 3. Well, it's been a long time and we still don't have that out yet. And even if it does eventually release, we don't know how its quality will stack up. I hope it's great. I hope it's better than frame generation. Heck, if they could do something that's better than what NVIDIA is doing and, you know, be open source where even NVIDIA GPUs could use it, uh, that would be amazing. But again, we just it, we just don't know. Um, for all we know, it could be great, it could be bad, it might never even end up actually releasing. So um, again, uh, you have to buy things based on where they're at now. So this was an interesting update on where are things at now. Uh, the 4090 is certainly uh, still uh, faster, but the 7900 XTX is generally delivering more performance per dollar. Uh, which is nice to see. And again, the closer price competitor is certainly the RTX 4080, and I just did that comparison, so why don't you take a look at that. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments section, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.